Welcome to Master the Game, I'm Juice, and today we're going to be talking about Dungeons & Dragons Ship Combat. So let's get started. Before I jump into the content of this video, I quickly want to shout out Filament to Fantasy. Thank you guys so much for providing these wonderful ships. Uh, you guys should go check out their Etsy store right now. The link is down in the description, and I'm also going to post it right here. If you want to type it into your own browser, there you go. Now, again, these are really awesome uh, multiple layered ships. This one is just two. Uh, this whole top lifts off, and then you have the underdeck. Now, this other one has multiple layers. This one, you obviously can open this to have the front quarters here. The doors are all fully functional, by the way. They do open and close, as you can see right there. This back deck lifts up, so you can see the captain's quarters. And then you also can lift the front portion up to reveal the bottom. And you can lift up the back portion, revealing that cabin area as well. So uh, a very, very awesome 3D print. Uh, you can pick up both of these for about $200 total if you want both of them. Uh, otherwise, this one I think was about $60, which, again, they're amazing. Um, and, again, reach out to them if, you know, if you're looking to get some ships. They have a bunch of other ships as well. They have other miniature prints over there. So, again, check them out. Can't recommend them enough. It was pretty easy to assemble all this. Um, so, again, you know, you got little siege weapons over here. You got interchangeable masts, like if you want to switch this out with one of those, for example. So again, there's some really cool stuff. You can put miniatures up here. Everything is playable if you want to put your miniatures up in there. There's plenty of room to move them around. There is a plank here that they can jump off of. So again, really cool stuff. So when you are looking at a stat block for a ship, there are three components to each stat block. You're going to have the basic stats, the components of the ship, which are going to determine various things about it, and then you're going to have the actions a ship can do. Now, a ship cannot perform actions on its own. It's going to need a crew to do specific things. So if you don't have enough crew to man the ship, you're not going to be able to do all the different actions. Most ship sizes start at large, and this matters for a variety of reasons. It's going to matter because if you crash into something, it's going to matter because of, again, how much of a crew you need to do the different functions of it, the size is also going to determine the hit points and other things associated with that ship. The size of the ship is determined by the length of the ship as well. The maximum capacity of a ship is going to be listed in its stat block. If a ship exceeds its maximum capacity, this could impact it in a variety of ways up to the dungeon master. It could make it so the ship is unable to move. If you reach maximum capacity, it could make it so that the ship starts taking on water. Uh, a variety of things could go wrong if they exceed the maximum capacity. The speed of the ship is going to be determined by the components of the ship. Depend on whether you're using sails, rowing, uh, the types of materials as well might play a factor into this. If you're on a time-sensitive mission, you might want to, you know, get a ship that has, um, again, better components, maybe a combination of components in order to fulfill the mission that you're seeking out. The strength of the ship is determined by the size and the weight of the ship. The dexterity is how mobile it is, um, you know, if it can turn a little bit quicker and things like that. And then the constitution of the ship is going to determine its durability. Now, while ships have intelligence, wisdom, and charisma in their stat block, they typically don't actually have anything in those stats. It's usually a zero. When a ship is required to make a save of, of some sort, if it's intelligence, wisdom, or a charisma save, they automatically are going to fail that check. And you might see this when dealing with spells, for example. There are a bunch of components to a ship, and I'm just going to show you what they are right here rather than just explain all of them. Now, we are going to lay out these two ships on the battle mats I have here and kind of display an example of how a combat between two ships might actually work. So, here you go. Alright, so here we go. So, right now we have the ships squaring off. So you can kind of see how they would line up for battle. Uh, the, this one is shooting a cannon 
and a, another siege weapon, probably with a harpoon gun of some sort. Over at the other ship, they're shooting arrows from the crow's nest, and they have a siege weapon on the front there that they are using. So while the other ship is bigger, it also does not have the power that this one does when it comes to siege weapons. At least that's how we're treating it for this combat. Now, the speed is going to be dictated by sails. So both of these ships use sails. They do not use Roman uh, down below, so we will just stick with that for now. Now, the larger ship tends to have a better movement speed, typically. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to treat it by the stat block. So, for example, your captain is going to be in charge of the maneuvering. As you can see, they've got the wheel. Um, when it comes to the weapon attacks, you're going to have whoever is on specific weapons. However, your ship only has so many actions per round. The captain is going to determine which actions each ship is going to take when it shoots out at the other ship uh, or when it moves and things like that. So there's going to be a variety of things done. When it comes to outside of combat, there's a variety of other tasks that the crew can make as well based on the captain's orders. We will cover that in a separate video though. Uh, for this video, we're just going to focus on the combat. Step one is going to be to roll for initiative. Initiative for ships is going to be the stat blocks dex plus the crew's quality score. Now the crew's quality score can range from a negative 10 to a positive 10, but for all ships, it'll start as a plus four. This is something that can change daily, uh, every 24 hours, and can change based on different circumstances. So it changes pretty frequently throughout a campaign. Then you're going to determine the uh, characters' initiatives as well. All the characters that are going to be doing things in combat not related to the ship. From there, you're going to decide as a DM, is the crew going to have actual actions or are they going to be acting with the ship? Um, now, it's up to the DM how complex they want it to be, but you can have every crew member act or you can have as few as zero of them actually acting uh, until the ships are actually engaged with each other. Now, when you are talking about actions in combat, your stat block is going to give you your core actions that each ship can do, but there are two actions that every ship can do. One of them is the take aim action, assuming they have weapons, and if you're within 10 feet of an officer who gives that order, then you will get advantage on your next attack roll. The other thing they can do is full speed ahead action. This is going to be a D6 times 5. This is the bonus to the ship's speed until the end of the next turn. It's basically like sprinting for a ship. Beyond that, actions are pretty straightforward. Unless a component is completely broken, you can do pretty much anything that's in the stat block or characters can act individually. When casting spells like fireball and things like that, a DM might request that you roll a D6, and that's the number of characters of the crew or the components that get caught up in the spell's effect. Uh, this is a quick, dirty, simple way to handle area of effect spells that uh, a lot of DMs are probably going to choose to do. Maybe you have a party member that wants to actually get over onto the other ship somehow. Maybe they cast a fly spell. They go over there, they can start attacking the different guys, uh, controlling different aspects of the ship. Uh, maybe they cut the sails down, maybe they set it on fire, things like that. So in this case, if he took him out, that ship no longer has a siege weapon. The captain can no longer order it to attack with its siege weapon. Uh, again, if the, sh the sails get cut down, the same thing's going to happen there. So again, just some things to consider. So... Anyway, ship combat can be pretty cool. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of interesting rules and things like that that you can apply, but also just doing normal things that you do in Dungeons & Dragons can be awesome. Casting spells like a wind spell to negate the speed, using fog and hiding, which, again, you can hide ships in fog. It's going to be up to the captain to make the, the rolls, but either way, really cool stuff. When uh, crashing a ship, the ship is going to have to make a DC 10 con save for half damage. Uh, if the ship hits a small obstacle, it's going to take 1d6 damage. If it takes a medium, it's going to be 1d10, large, 4d10, huge, 8d10, and gargantuan, 16d10. 
Now, the damage typically is going to apply to the hull, but if for whatever reason the damage hits elsewhere, it's going to take that damage to those specific components. If your DM lets you, you could probably come up with a custom stat block based on the type of ship that you print, or if, you know, it's based on, you know, a ship that you guys have built from the ground up, maybe you've drawn it out uh, on your flip mat. Um, so you might actually have a custom stat block of some sort. If you have any questions about these rules or, or how to adjudicate something, feel free to post your questions in the comments below. So once again, thank you guys for watching. These, again, are from Filament the Fantasy. Go check them out on Etsy. They have some really awesome prints. They have a variety of ships, more than just these two. They also have a variety of other miniatures that you might be interested in. Tell them that Juice from Master the Game sent you. This was Master the Game. I am Juice. Game on.